Welcome to NHK's Radio English Conversation Program. I'm Marcia Krakauer. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Clark. We're here to enjoy learning English together. Dressing the part. Marco is adjusting his tie in the hallway mirror when his son Jack passes by. Dad, you're not going to wear that on the first day of your new job, are you? What's wrong with it? It looks like you're trying too hard. Well, I would like to make a good first impression. Come on, Dad. You're a hip art director at a major New York ad agency. So, where did I go wrong? The tie? Uh huh. I'd lose the jacket, too. I've always worn a tie to work. But it has no practical use. Sure, it does. It's the easiest means of expressing one's individuality. Well, I guess the choice of tie probably does say something about the wearer's personality. What's the matter? Don't you like my Mondrian like geometric necktie? Let's just say that nobody will take you for an ultra conservative businessman. As fashion consultant to the hip and happening, what would you suggest then? How about that charcoal gray sweater hanging in your closet? The v neck? Yeah, with a t shirt underneath and black jeans. Jeans? On the first day? Wouldn't you say that's a bit too casual for my position? These days, it's much better to err on the side of insouciance. Insouciance? That prep course you're taking for the college boards is paying off. I'm serious. You work in the creative department. You have one on one contact with film directors, music composers, editors. <laughs> ah, yes. The glamour of creating TV commercials. It is glamorous. You're a big time art director. You've got to dress the part. By tomorrow, your first day will be history. All right. Jeans and sweater it is. I'll have you select my socks, too. Sometimes I don't know what you'd do without me, Dad. Getting a new partner. Amy is sitting at her office desk when her young secretary, Missy, drops by with the morning mail. You seem a little nervous, Amy. Nervous? What's there to be nervous about? Well, you're getting a new partner today. It's not like we haven't met. I interviewed him, after all. I hear he's a bit older than you. Won't that bother you? Why should it? We could use a little maturity around here. But advertising's such a young business. Marco knocks tentatively on Amy's door. Am I interrupting anything? Marco! I didn't expect you to come in so early. Missy, our secretary, was just getting me some coffee. Oh, yes. Welcome to the agency. Cream and sugar? Please. Aren't you due up in human resources to fill out some forms first? In 15 minutes. I thought maybe you could point me to my new office. You lucked out. It's right next door. I thought if we had adjoining offices, It'd be more convenient for those reporting to us. Absolutely. We were told to cut our support staff in half last year. So I've heard. How did you all manage? Now, all of us executives share assistance. I guess you eventually figure these things out. Right. Especially when there's no room to argue. It must have been tough. But it probably made you all better in managing the department. Amy and Marco survey his new office. So, what do you think of this space? I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting such a nice view. That's the beauty of working in Soho. You look out your window and see these ornate cast iron buildings. Missy returns with their coffee. They look like wedding cakes, don't they? It's such a switch from Midtown, where it's all glass and steel. Well, I'll let you get settled. Thanks. I'll come by when I'm through with human resources. Getting the lay of the land. Marco is standing in the elevator hall, trying to decide whether to press up or down. Joel, an agency producer, joins him. You look lost. I am. 
Is human resources on the floor above us or below us? <laughs> you must be Marco. Welcome to the agency. I'm Joel Schwartz. Nice to meet you. How'd you know who I was? Amy told me her new partner was starting today. I guess my asking about human resources gave me away. <laughs> I put two and two together. So what do you do around here? I'm a producer. In fact, I've been assigned to work with you on your new TV commercial. Slow down. I haven't gotten any work orders. Yet. You will. It's sort of a rush. When isn't it? <laughs> you got that right. Oh, here's my elevator. I'm in the production department. Second floor. Joel jumps into the elevator just as the doors are closing. You forgot to tell me. Human resources? Juanita, the lobby receptionist, suddenly makes her presence known. Up. Excuse me? Human resources is the next floor up. I overheard your conversation. An elevator going up arrives. Then this must be my elevator. Thanks. Uh, your name? Juanita. Fourth floor receptionist. Five days a week. See you later. Once upstairs, Marco is greeted by Sally, the personnel director. Ah, Marco. Start filling out these forms. I'll be with you in a minute. Everyone seems to be so busy here. Yes, so little time, so much to do. Looks like I didn't get here a moment too soon. We have been a bit short-handed lately. Well, now that I've got this paperwork behind me, I can jump into the fray. <laughs> Working in this agency is a bit like warfare. I can see you're going to fit in here just fine. The Agency Watering Hole Amy, Marco, and Joel head down to the local tavern for a drink after work. Amy's best friend, Lise, is waiting for them at the bar. I'll have the usual, Joe. Whatever's on tap for me, Joe. The name's not Joe. It's Sam. You must be Marco. How'd you know that, Sam? Amy said her new partner would be starting today. Why did Amy call you Joe? The regulars can call me what they want. Speaking of regulars, allow me to introduce my best buddy, Lee's. Best buddy, yes. Regular, no. Lee's is one of the best reps in town. She's been scouting and launching careers for commercial directors. Yes, I know. Isn't Lance Egan one of your directors? Yes. With his cutting-edge taste, he's my hottest property right now. So, do you guys come here often? No week is complete without a drink at the agency watering hole. Let's drink a toast to our new employee. Cheers, Cheers Marco. Thanks, and I appreciate you buying this round of drinks. Your first day only happens once. My son said something to that effect this morning. He sounds like a very wise little boy. It's more like young man. Jack just turned 17. Marco, you don't look old enough to have a teenage son. <laughs> That's because having a teenager keeps me young. Excellent. The youth angle will help us with our new assignment. I keep hearing about this new assignment. What's up? Listen to him. You agency types treat this bar like it's virtually your office. Amy, I have got the perfect director for you. Slow down, Lise. These guys haven't even created a storyboard yet. Jeff, despite the tragic events of September 11, 2001, I think many New Yorkers have worked hard to rebuild their lives again. Yeah. For the victims' families, it has meant starting to rebuild a family without a beloved member. Right, and for the city, it's meant starting literally to rebuild an important part of the downtown area from debris. And that includes building up the morale of the city workers and citizens. So, in a way, I think it's almost like being on a new job assignment for all New Yorkers. Exactly. It's starting over for everyone. Yeah. You know, the New York Times Magazine did a feature entitled Beginnings, two months after the tragedy. And it included the voices of the New Yorkers. 
you know, how they were coping with their new environment. Really? Uh, what sort of people appeared in the article? Well, there was uh, the owner of the restaurant mm. that was on top of the World Trade oh. Center. And he said that his priority was to help the younger families among the victims because they were in an especially difficult situation. Oh, yeah. They probably weren't uh, prepared financially for this. Exactly. So his focus is on how to help them rebuild their families. Mm -hmm. I see. And the issue also devoted some pages as to what should be built on the so-called Ground Zero, the site where the buildings once were. All right. Uh, they had an urban planner, a structural engineer, and a landscape designer discuss the options. Mm, well, wow. you know, Marcia, it, it all sounds very responsible and caring and rational, all that. But that's just the opposite of the cynical free-for-all New York that we're all used to, isn't it? Well, one of the regular columnists, uh, Michael Lewis, mm. had that touch of New York cynicism when he wrote that the most disturbing thing for anyone who wants New York to remain the capital of capitalism is that New Yorkers have become sweet, kind people <laughs> who don't care about money-making. But he also added that this is probably just a passing moment. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, New York has changed for good, um, but it always will be New York. Um, it's an exciting place to visit, even for us people from Los Angeles, I have to admit. Thank you. <laughs> and New York will no doubt continue to be the place for ambitious younger people who have a dream. You know, whether it's making money, doing something for the world, or being number one in their field. Mm, good point. Well, let's go on and find out about lifestyles.